Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldong. Today, I'm going to do a manga review for Your Line April, Volumes 8 and 9. Next time, I'll finish the manga reviews for Your Line April with Volumes 10 and 11. I'll also have a reading of my short story, The Underachievers, pages 3 and 5, and a movie review for Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismoldong.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories in the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and uh, retweet my stuff, and also check out my author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. If you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So, the way that this is going to work is that I am going to do a um, detailed recap of Volume 8 of Your Line April, and then give my thoughts on Volume 8, and do the same for Volume 9. So, let's get started with Volume 8 of Your Line April. The volume begins with Kosei telling his sensei that he's going to take the test for the high school affiliated with Okotsu Music Academy. He's gotten his father's permission and he'll be leaving home. If he can't get into schools here, his piano teacher suggests that he goes overseas. She'd introduce him to someone she met when she was studying abroad. Tsubaki overhears a conversation and runs off when Kosei approaches. Tsubaki gets mad while doing the long jump and lands on her face. In the flashback, Tsubaki shows Kosei two, uh, two mud balls, but they're broken and she cries. In the present, Tsubaki shows up uh, to Watari and Kosei with a bandaged face. Watari calls her a skinned wiener and she tries to attack them with a broom. However, she stops and walks away when she sees Kosei. Spocky reveals that she's so mixed up and feels like a fool for it. Then she goes crazy at a jungle gym. She then walks home with Saito-senpai, and he tells her that he fell in love with someone else. He says that she seems so uncomfortable around him. He then breaks up with her and thanks her for being his girlfriend. Back in the music room, Tsubaki sits in front of the piano and tries to play it. Kosei comes in and sits next to her. She tells him that her boyfriend bro uh, broke up with her. Tsubaki realizes that the one whose time has really stopped is her, is her own. And uh, she then gets mad at Kosei for not comforting her. Doesn't make a difference if he's there or not, she tells him. But Kosei says, then I'll stay here. I'll be right here by your side. Internally, Tsubaki says that she wants to be uh, by his side uh, and to make her time start moving. Uh, back at school, Tsubaki notices that Kaori hasn't been to school all second term, and Kosei stands in front of the hospital building, uh, the hospital building, but makes excuses for not going in. He walks home, but bad things keep happening to him. A girl falls from a tree right onto Kosei, and then he brings this girl uh, to Hiroko's house. The girl sees Hiroko and asks to be her student. She introduces herself as Nagi Aizato, a first year in the music division at Kurumi Gaoka Middle School. She majors in piano and is a pianist. Hiroko comments that it's a famous music school and tells Nagi that she... Uh, to make her want to teach her with her playing. Nagi plays and both Hiroko and Kosei acknowledge that she's good. Hiroko asks if she can start coming next week, but internally, uh, Nagi calls Kosei a snake in the grass. Hiroko tells Kosei that he's going to be Nagi's teacher. Kosei walks home from a pastry place and he thinks about Nagi's playing. He says that it's thorny. Uh, not corny, thorny. Kosei then goes to visit Kaori, but he hears Watari talking with her in the room and leaves. So he doesn't actually go in the room. 
He walks home and his cell phone rings. It's Cowrie, and she's not happy. She tells him that she hadn't heard his voice in a while. He tells her that he's eating cannelli, uh, and he says that he'll bring her some next time. Hiroko looks at Nagi's profile and asks what kind of trouble she'll bring. She plays with such hostility that Hiroko picks up that she has an elk for Kosei. In the hospital, Kawai ro uh, Kauri walks around and suddenly collapses. We're shown Kauri reading sheet music and she falls and hits her head. She bleeds and then passes out. Nagi practices piano, but Kosei strongly critiques her playing. Nagi says that not playing according to the score is an act of egotism. Kosei explains that the score isn't perfect, and it's a very emotional product of human conception. Nagi tells him that it's because he spends his time spouting that naive garbage that he fell down to a mortal's level. Back at school, Kosei uh, walks home and sees Kauri waiting for someone in her school uniform. He's surprised to see her. She says that she's looking for Watari. Kosei says that he's still at school and says that he'll get him, but Kauri grabs Kosei and points him to take his place. They go shopping and Kosei becomes a bag carrier. Kosei asks where her school bag is and she says let's go get it. Nagi is with Hiroko during this time and Nagi gets angry at Kosei for being late. Hiroko tells Nagi that she told her that she's a fan of hers, yet she's obsessed with Kosei. Hiroko doesn't know what she's after, but if she does anything to hurt Kosei, Hiroko will kill Nagi. Nagi comments that she must really love Kosei. Hiroko responds that he's her, uh, that uh, Kosei is her son. Nagi asks Hir Hiroko if she could really trust her enemy, but Hiroko says that she thought that Nagi was a fellow traveler on the path of music. Back with Kauri and Kosei, go to school at night, walk around different parts of the school. Kauri reveals that her bag isn't at school, and also reveals that she didn't go to school and that the Hospital only let her out for that one day. She just really wanted to come to school. Kosei apologizes for erasing her one day, but Kauri asks if he can forget it, um, and if he can forget the girl who he spent the day, uh, who he spent the day with. Kosei tells her that he'll never forget to his dying day. Kauri tells him that she's glad it was him. She gets wobbly and tells him that she's just a little tired. They bike home in tandem with uh, Kauri sitting behind Kosei. Kauri tells him that this day wasn't wasted. It was so wonderful that time has stopped and it's thanks to him. She grabs him by the jacket and starts crying. He could, Kosei could not ask her why she was crying. Nagi shows her... Um, we're then shown uh, Nagi and pretty much her accolades and how boys like her. Nagi then practices under Kosei, but he constantly criticizes her playing, getting her frustrated. Internally, Nagi says that she hates incompetence, but she hates Kosei Arima even more. Kosei questions Hiroko if he's teaching Nagi right. Hiroko tells him that he's taking her pride that's holding her back and smashing it to tiny little pieces. That's when she'll get it. She'll make her breakthrough. At Nagi's school, her classmates ask what she decided to play for the school festival, but she hasn't decided yet. Her classmate says that uh, their school festival is pretty famous. It brings its top students together to give unique performances overflowing with originality. Um, back with to Kosei teaching Nagi, and he criticizes her to the point where she runs away. Kosei looks for her and finds her on top of some steps of a Shinto shrine, and he gives her a potato. Nagi tells Kosei that her hero used to play uh, with her at the local shrine all the time. He started playing the piano first, then she took it up. He's always ahead of her, and she's just catching up. However, he's uh, obsessed with someone else. He's apparently in a dark labyrinth in his mind. Nagi wants her hero to notice her. She's going to use the piano to get him to do it. She questions why she's telling Kosei this, though. And she, then she asks Kosei if he's in love with someone. Kosei says no, but Nagi tells him that he's lying. Kosei tells her that he can't be in love because she's in love with his friend. And then everyone visits Kauri in the hospital. Kosei didn't bring her Kanelli, and she gets mad. 
Carrie is told that Kosei is teaching a middle school student. She gets mad and tells Kosei to practice more. She then yells at him and says that the competition starts in December. She says, before you know it, and starts to cry. Nagi practices the piano. Her friends tell her that her music sounds like it's skipping. Nagi goes home, and it's revealed that her brother is Aiza. Kosei visits Kari at the hospital alone at night. In the end of the volume, Kari asks Kosei if he wants to commit double suicide with her. So, some thoughts on uh, volume 8. Um, Kosei is planning to go to a school away from home. That's interesting. That is yet another part of his journey, really. Um, to leave the comforts and it's not so comfortable. I mean, he doesn't really, he doesn't have his mom there. Um, he's still, he's, it seems like he's getting away from the emotional scarring that is, <laughs> that like doing all those, being the human metronome, uh, gave him. So, but at the same time, uh, you know, he's planning to, for the next challenge. So, you know, he's growing, like his journey is one of growth like oh you know he got over this he got over thing with his mom now it's like oh i'm gonna move away from home away from my friends family and whatever so it's a part of his growth but then it's also in a sense stunting subaki's growth because let's face it subaki likes kosei Day, you know, she's now broken up with Saito Senpai. Saito Senpai seemed like a good guy, but he's just a guy. You know, <laughs> like he's he's not Kosei. Um, there's not anything deeper between the two, really. Subaki and Kosei are really close. She was there when Kosei was going through all that hard stuff and whatnot. She was there when he got, you know, was doing the piano again. Um, so they, they have quite a history and, um, you know, until she like reconciles her feelings or whatever, it seems like she's kind of at, and she, she said it herself, she's kind of at a stop in her own journey. Speaking of journeys, we're introduced to Nagi Aizato. Um, she's interesting just because... She doesn't like Kosei. We kind of get an idea why. Because of what the stuff she was saying about her hero and whatnot. Assume it, you know, I, we can, I think we can assume her, her, it sounds a little bit like Isa, you know. Um, and is, is her hero her brother, you know. And also, Isa is pretty much something of like, this friendly rival to Kosei. And, um, you know, this is also yet the, another step in Kosei's progression because now he's, he was a student for so long and, you know, it's kind of funny because his mom was so strict with her. In a sense, he's not that far away from his mom because he is so strict with Nagi just he's not violent with her he's not physically violent with her but man, does he break her down you know um and obviously she has a real nagi has a really hard time taking it the school festival you know this is being brought up I, i'm kind of wondering I, I assume we're gonna see a performance with nagi and that's probably like the next big thing, you know, performance. I assume that that's going to happen. A lot also happened with Kauri here. Um, she wasn't in school, but she went to the school anyways to see it with Kose, not with Watari. She's also glad that it was him and not Watari. I mean, we're getting closer to the end. There's a lot more connection with Kauri and Kosei than there is with Kauri and Watari. I'm not, let's just face facts. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what it is. Is it a musical thing? Is it a romantic thing? It looks like it. 
Is it something else? Because the ending is like, do you want to commit double suicide with me? Like, wow, what what kind of question is that? <laughs> you know, like, she didn't ask Watari this question. She asked Kose. You know, I, I don't know if he's just friend A still, and like, she's just, she can be this way around Kose, but doesn't have romantic feelings for him or whatnot. But obviously, they have a very unique and very complicated relationship. Um, obviously, Kose saw his mother suffer and was always in the hospital. Now, Kauri is in the hospital suffering, unable to play. It's seemingly, um, seemingly just I, I, unable to play music, too, you know? Kose has to kind of like pick up the slack in a sense and um, yeah I, I kind of wonder what Kose's response is going to be and, and it makes you wonder about Kauri's state of mind right now I mean she is at this point now where she's sick I don't know if she has music with her like she once did she's such a free spirit and now she's thinking killing herself or at least asking maybe not thinking about it but she asks the question you know it makes you question her state of mind and um makes me curious to see how this affects kose kauri and the rest of the gang moving forward okay on to volume nine the volume begins with a young aiza talking about kose he says that he's like a superhero now he sees his, her brother sitting in front of the piano, looking like he's struggling and just utterly dejected. Uh, Kose is at school with his head down at his desk. His friends ask if he wants to go visit Kauri with them, but he refuses. Tsubaki talks to Kashiwagi and admits that she wishes that Kose wouldn't go see Kauri. Kose practices with Hiroko and Nagi, but his mind is elsewhere. Hiroko tells him to go home. Nagi chases after him. Kosi says that when he was playing for someone else, he played well. When his music reaches lots of people and their hearts intertwine, maybe that's when music transcends words. Back at school, Watari asks Kosuke, uh, Kose to go see Kauri, but Kose refuses, and Watari asks if he's avoiding her. He accidentally pushes Kose against the wall. Kose says that he doesn't know what to do. Kose remembers when Kauri asked him to commit double suicide. She says that she was just kidding and just wanted to try saying it out loud. Kauri admits to not doing well. Watari tells Kose that he should really go see her. He admits that he's not the one who can help her. Watari tells him that whenever she wants something, it's always you, Kose. Kose visits Kauri at the hospital, bringing Kennelly. Uh, Kauri says that there's no point in a violinist who can't hold her bow. Kose gets all the Kennelly and eats it all. He tells her that pessimists don't get any and that she's irresponsible. We're shown one day in November where Kose and Nagi are dressed up and look to be ready to perform on stage. Uh, we then go back to the present. Kose begs Nagi to play at Kuru Fest. So that's uh, Nagi's school's her school's uh, festival and Nagi agrees we're shown Nagi ignoring everyone and constantly practicing the piano she doesn't even want to eat during the final four days before the festival we're shown that many people have criticized Nagi for being a, for being cute and just being an idol and kind of just get it seems like getting by just more on her looks and her talent people are also placing expectations on her like her teachers Nagi runs to the bathroom crying while Hiroko consoles her. Nagi asks why she's so penis. Uh, Hiroko tells her that there's a moment that makes up for everything. Kose and his friends visit Kauri. After the visit, Kose asks uh, Watari for a favor. We're then shown the Kuru Fest. Watari, Tsubaki, Kashiwagi are all there. Aiza is seen. Uh, in the audience, uh, waiting for Nagi's performance. He's, he's just like, sitting down in the audience. Uh, he's also talking to a girl. Um, I can't really tell who it is. It looks like it, it's Emmy. Because she's like wearing glasses and her hair's 
differently, and she's in a school uniform, so I can't really tell if that's Emmy or is that someone else. I'll assume it's Emmy. Not too sure, though. Backstage, Nagi is clearly nervous and shaking, but acts like she's okay. Kosei talks to her and calms her down. In a flashback, Kosei tells Nagi that he has a really terrible friend who is being a whiny pessimist. He wants to give her a nice good punch. Nagi and Kosei go on stage. The audience is surprised that Kosei is there, including Aiza. They are playing a duet from The Sleeping Beauty, The Rose Adagio, and The Garland Waltz. The girl talking with Aiza, comment, who I think is Emmy, comments how good Nagi's gotten. <laughs> Things start out great, but Kosei can still hear the piano. However, he doesn't want to hear the piano, and he wants the sound to disappear, and then he makes the sound disappear. Once that happens, the sound changes. Watari is using his cell phone so that Kaori can hear the performance. Internally, Nagi questions what Kosei's doing and questioning why he's piling all this pressure on her. It's nothing like they practiced. The tempo gets abnormally fast, and Kosei starts to overwhelm the main melody. Internally, uh, Hiroko questions if Nagi will just let Kosei have his way and tells her to settle the score. Nagi accepts the challenge, but Kosei drags her around. It's said, though, that she can take it. Nagi remembers her brother complimenting Kosei, calling him a robot and super alloy. She refutes that statement and says that Kosei doesn't have a heart of steel. It's said that it's like Nagi's having an awakening. The piano teacher, Kos Kosuke Oka, says that Kosei is carrying his partner wherever he wants her to go. This is without a doubt their waltz. Watari has a cell phone out. And Kaori listens as she sits on her hospital bed. Internally, Nagi reveals that she just loves her brother and wants to get his attention. So that is why she plays the piano. She wanted to run away and knew that her brother felt the same way. She didn't want to see him like that. Nagi remembers running up the steps to the shrine with her brother as she follows behind. She says, you're my superhero. Kaori is shown playing... She's kind of like... Um, like a, like imaginarily playing the violin like kind of like air violin pretty much in a sense so they get to the end and they're still raising the tempo Isaac questions what he's doing there and why he's in the audience looking up at the stage isn't he supposed to be up there they end their performance and there's a moment that makes it all worth it pretty much where everyone's just st they get a standing ovation Nagi asks Kos Kosei on the stage if they've reached them. Kosei says that they did. She also asks Kosei if he, he got that punch in. Kosei says that he thinks he did and that he doesn't think that she'll ever forget it. They go backstage. Hiroko tells them that since she started teaching them both, she's just been having way too much fun. Aiza comes backstage furious with Kosei. He reveals that Nagi is his sister. Um... To Kosei. He asks Kosei why he's playing a duet with his sister and gets even more angry. Aiza then argues, um, I'll start calling him Takeshi from now on instead of Aiza. So Takeshi argues with Nagi and after some misunderstandings, really funny misunderstandings by the way, Takeshi starts to cry. Takeshi runs off, but before that, he tells Kosei that in December, the East. Uh, Japan piano competition starts. That's where he's going to beat the stuffing out of him. He then runs off. Internally, Takeshi asks if Kosei thinks he can shove that performance in his face and if he'll just take it without a fight. Back in middle school, um, like the next day, I guess, to, uh, Takaya Mike, that winner of the performance that uh, Kaori was in meets Nagi for the first time their classmates had them segregated because they knew they wouldn't be compatible Mike asks Nagi if she's friends with Kosei he asks how to get in touch with them and for his email address um, from Nagi and then they got she says some stuff he says it's not fair that she's friends with Kosei and runs off Kosei visits Kaori on the roof of the hospital. She's playing music with some kids. 
Um, not the Lion Lion. It's actually like this, like, toy piano thingy, or toy keyboard thingy. Kose tells her that he cannot commit double suicide with her. She's always walking ahead of him, and he's always behind her. It wouldn't be double suicide, but just him following her. Kose asks Kaori to play with him one more time in a, in a performance, you know, music. And if he, and he's not ever going to play Ravel. She tells him that he's so cruel. Internally, Kaori says that he's making her dream again. Dream that someday she'll play a waltz with him. We're then shown Takeshi practicing the piano with his instructor while struggling, but he keeps going. And they're then shown Emmy's instructor telling Emmy that Takeshi and Kose are going to be at the East Japan uh, East Japan piano competition in December. At the end of the volume, Emmy says that if Kose is going to enter, then Takeshi will be there. So ju she'll just have to beat them both to a pulp. So some thoughts on volume nine. Um, wow, <laughs> that performance, man. Woo. Uh, that, that it was quite the performance, um, full of emotion, it's so cool to see Kose not, like, embracing and, and wanting not to hear the music anymore, he, he's definitely, fa you know, he's finding himself as a pianist, as a performer, you know, not just a human metronome that just follows the score, um, with, with zero emotion, and it looks like he's taking Nagi with him. He's taking uh, Takeshi with him. Emmy, it seems like you know, everyone gets spurred on by Kose. That's the thing, and his playing. There's just something about him that is infectious. You know, um. He's really good. For one thing, the guy's legit good. But then the other thing is, the guy is, he has his own sound, you know. He has a way of connecting people and let others know what he's feeling through his music. And it brings others together. It also spurs people to do better. It's, it's an amazing thing. That Kose Kose has, um, th th yeah. There's <laughs> there, there's just a lot to say here. Uh, let's go with Nagi, I guess. You know, Nagi's kind of, was kind of completing this journey. You know, uh, she's a girl that seemed, I wouldn't say spoiled, but she's someone that maybe did indeed get by with being cute, um, having talent, but more style than substance, I guess, I, I can't really, I can't really say what it is, but she's criticized a lot, but she actually made the sacrifices, she suffered, and, but she kept going, and she was able to keep up with Kose, and, and get that moment that Hiroko was talking about. Hiroko is kind of full circle here at this point. She's Kosei's mom. I mean, that's it. I mean, she said it too, you know. It's like, she's my, you know, he's my son. You know, like, done. You know, that's it. Like, everything's kind of full circle with Hiroko now. You know, she's watching her pupils grow. Kosei and Nagi. And everything's just... Good. Everything. Everything seems really good with her. You know that there's like something of a journey with her, with the mom. She couldn't be with Kose and the family, and then she comes back. And the the, the journey with Hiroko seems like it's finally come full circle. And good for her. You know, it, it's it's not. This volume didn't just kind of hinted at it, but it's it was kind of there. You know. Um. Takeshi and Nagi, though, uh, <laughs> man, you know, I always say this about Takeshi, this dude's so intense, man, it, it's, it, it's 
funny how intense this guy is. He, it's just like, get away from my sister, damn it! Do you know what I mean? He's just like screaming, you know? Like, he is just such an intense dude, you know? And, um, Kosei, you know, having this mentor, student, friend relationship with his little sister. And Takeshi has a huge sister complex. Not only he has a huge brother complex, but Takeshi has like this huge sister complex. <laughs> I mean, just put Takeshi over the edge. But it's also a part of his journey too, you know, like you know, like that's the thing. It's it's kinda like it's what Kosei said early on, hey look. You don't like my performance? Well, that's the best I got. We're still on a journey, you know? And it's like, Takashi was kind of on the dumps. And, he, you know, this was the thing. This performance, you know, that Kosei more or less shoved in his face. Hanging out with his little sister, who he obviously, like I said, has this big sister complex. You know, he's now being pushed. I and mean, the dude's already intense. Already really intense. This, this pushes them over the edge, but it spurs them on to play the piano, struggle, but to keep going. That's, that's the thing. Um, and speaking of spurring someone on, Kosei and Kaori. I mean, no double suicide here. And he, he, you know, he made her listen to this performance. She gave up. You know, she gave up. And it was this performance that she needed. Kosei knew it. it it's it, Once again, th there's this real idea of, like, things going full circle. You know, it's it's just like, Kauri was the one initially spurring Kosei forward. Now, it's Kosei spurring Kauri forward. You know, she can't hold her bow right. She still loves music. You know, it's her thing. You know, she goes to a roof, he goes to a roof, what's there? Music. You know, it's still her thing. She still loves music. And, you know, he says, hey, let's play together one last time. And how can she say no to that? He spurs her on too. You know, it, it was, you know, it, it's crazy. Full circle, the journey. So it really is a journey, you know. Back then, you know, and that's kind of that's kind of a nice thing as we're ending the series. We're getting close to the end. Two more volumes. I I really think that the the last half of Your Lion April, seemingly so far, volume nine. There's eleven volumes. Is about journey, finishing the journey, you know, reaching the goal, or like spurring others forward. And, and things coming just full circle. Like I said, they came full circle for Hiroko. So now it's coming full circle for Kosei. You know, slowly but surely. Maybe it comes full circle. We'll see what happens with Kaori. Two more volumes. She's in the hospital. But he wants her to play with her one last time. We're also heading to this thing in December. East Japan Piano Competition. Emmy's fired up. Takeshi fired up. Kosei is in the middle of it. So, you know, it, you know, Kosei is thinking about, you know, going to school somewhere else. You know, everything's coming around full circle. We'll see how the next two volumes play out and, and finish up the series. So, that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to uh, subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to this manga review. Next time, I will have a manga review for Your Lion April, volumes 10 and 11, and finish the series. A reading of my short story, The Underachievers, pages 3 to 5. And a movie review for Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Thank you. And until next time.